Thousands of aircraft operate in the national airspace system every day, from small commuter props up to heavy jets bound for overseas destinations. In this episode, we're going to take you inside the air traffic control system and show what happens on both sides of the microphone as we use UND's FAA certified CRJ200 flight training device and state-of-the-art tower and radar simulators to follow an aircraft through each phase of its flight, all the way from takeoff to landing. All that and more is coming up today on ATCAST. Hi, my name is Dan Lindsay. In this episode, we're going to introduce you to the National Airspace System. We'll follow an aircraft as it interacts with air traffic control from receiving its IFR clearance all the way through landing at its destination airport. Hopefully this will give you an idea of what's going on both in the cockpit and in the various ATC facilities during the different phases of flight, along with serving as an introduction to how the ATC system works. Because of the length of this episode, we're making it available in three parts so that it's easier to download and watch. Let's start by looking at the different phases of flight. Flights are divided into five different phases. Phase one is the pre-flight, taxi, and takeoff portion. During this phase, the pilots pre-flight the aircraft, obtain their clearance to operate in controlled airspace, taxi to the runway, and take off. Phase two is the departure phase, during which the aircraft must navigate the congested airspace around the airport as it starts climbing to its final cruising altitude and joins its route of flight. Phase three is called the en route phase. During this portion of the flight, the aircraft is established on its route and cruising at its final altitude. Normally, the aircraft will not deviate from its course or altitude unless necessary for weather or other traffic. Phase 4 is the descent and approach phase. It's basically the reverse of phase 2. The aircraft descends out of its cruising altitude, enters the congested airspace around its destination airport, and is vectored and cleared for some kind of approach, whether it be a visual or instrument approach. The final phase of flight, phase 5, is the arrival phase. During this portion of the flight, the aircraft lands and taxis to its parking location, whether that's a gate, ramp, or hangar. Workload for pilots and controllers is highest during the takeoff, departure, approach, and landing phases of flight. Basically, the closer you are to the airport, the busier you are. For controllers, the reason is that airspace near airports is more congested than airspace along the en route portion of the flight. And controllers have to deal with lots of traffic in a more confined space, and may have complex airspace and procedures designed to accommodate the traffic volume. For pilots, these phases are busy because they require lots of changes in aircraft configuration, speed, altitude, and heading. Instrument approaches in particular can be demanding for pilots, require time and effort to prepare for, and may be quite complicated. Pilots also have to contend with close proximity to other traffic and sometimes rapid-fire communication from air traffic control, which may require prompt compliance. Radio communication might seem easy until you're one of 15 other aircraft with similar call signs on the same frequency. Now that we've looked at the five phases of flight, let's follow an aircraft through each phase and see what happens in the cockpit and how the pilots interact with air traffic control. This is Superjet 2245. It's a Canadair Regional Jet, or CRJ for short, one of the most common regional jets in use in the United States. Nine different regional carriers operate this kind of aircraft. There are more than 900 CRJs of various models in operation between them, so chances are pretty good that you've flown on one at some point. Superjet 2245's route today will take it from Academy Airport, located here at Tulsa, Oklahoma, to Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport here. Academy Airport is a fictional airport where you'll be doing your training in your ATC classes here at UND, and it's also the basis for training conducted at the FAA Academy in Oklahoma City. Let's jump right into phase one of the flight as the pilots are finishing their pre-flight checks, looking at the weather, and getting ready to get their clearance from air traffic control. Before contacting ATC, the pilots will listen to the Automatic Terminal Information Service, or ATIS, which provides weather and other important information. It can be either automated or recorded manually by controllers, and plays on a continuous loop on its own radio frequency. Academy Tower, information, Foxtrot, one nine or five two zero. wind two seven five at eight, visibility one zero. Eight thousand five hundred scattered, temperature two seven, two point one five, 
Altimeter 29 or 73. ILS runway 28 right and runway 28 left approaches in use. Landing and departing runways 28 right and 28 left. Departing runway 16. Use caution for mower operating between taxiways Alpha and Charlie. All pilots should read back all hold short instructions. Rise on initial contact, you have Fox Charlie. Academy Tower information. Superjet 2245 with Foxtrot uh, IFR to Minneapolis. Superjet 2245, Academy Ground. There's a change in your routing due to weather in Minneapolis. Advise when ready to copy. And Superjet uh, 2245, uh, go ahead, we're ready to copy. Superjet 2245, cleared to Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport via the Colin Departure Procedure, J123. Miami J-157, Kansas City, Direct Fort Dodge, T-Wolf 1 arrival. Maintain 5000, expect flight level 350, one zero minutes after your departure. Departure frequency 120.2, squawk 3427. And uh, Academy Ground, Superjet 2245 is cleared to the Minneapolis International Airport via the Collin departure J-123 Miami j 157 Kansas City direct to Fort Dodge, then the T Wolf 1 arrival. Climb maintain 5,000 feet, expect flight level 350, 10 minutes after departure. Uh, frequency 120.23427. Superjet 2245, read back correct. Advise this frequency when ready to taxi. Roger, uh, Superjet uh, 2245. All right, Captain, uh, information Foxtrot is uh, valid, winds 275 at 8 knots, visibility is 10, it's a little bit scattered at uh, 8,500 feet, temperatures 27, uh, dew points 15, and altimeters 29. The IFR clearance authorizes Superjet 2245 to operate in controlled airspace and confirms its routing, altitude, and squat code assignment. The first officer now briefs the captain on the ATIS and the clearance they received while the captain enters the updated route into the aircraft's flight management system, or FMS. The FMS will handle pretty much all of the navigation once the pilots turn on the autopilot. ...to Kansas City and then direct to Fort Dodge for the t wolf one arrival. And uh, going up to 5,000 and then uh, uh, 350 and 10. Frequency for departure is going to be 120.2. I'll get that set in and it'll be uh, 3427 for the squash. Once the loading of passengers and baggage is complete, the pilots will finish their final checks and push back from the gate. Okay. APUAC electrics. Unchecked. Papers. Takeoff data. Doors. Beacon. On. Fuel pumps cross flow quantity. Unchecked and uh, 6600. Hydraulic pumps. Auto on. Parking brake. Off. Clear to start check to the line complete. Okay. Power ramp crew uh, cleared to push for 2245. As the aircraft is being pushed back, the crew begins their engine start procedures. Packs. Off. Ignition. Armed. Clear to start check. Uh, below line complete. Rolling on two. Okay. ATC won't deal with the pilots until they're ready to taxi. So for now, the ramp crew ensures that Superjet is clear of other traffic and personnel on the ramp as it pushes back.
which are two line uh, Generators. On. Leads, packs, cargo fan or set not, ignition. Uh, off. Uh, Anise is off, the probes are on, APR. Tested. Electrics. Checked. Trims. Uh, green and 5.4. Thrust reversers. Armed. Flight instruments. Okay, I got uh, 38, 39, 50, 70, 7, 200. Uh, 2973 set left and center. And 5,000. 38, 39, 50, 77, 200, uh, 2 niner, 7, 3, set right, and 5,000. FMS? Set for. And after start, checked to the line complete. Call ground for taxi. Now the crew is ready to taxi to the runway, so the pilots will call the tower. Ground control is a position responsible for the movement of aircraft on the ground, so that's who the pilots will talk to next. Academy Ground, Superjet 2245, ready to taxi. Superjet 2245, runway 28 right, taxi via Alpha. Superjet 2245, clear taxi, runway 28 right, via Alpha. All right. Clear The pilots are now following their assigned taxi route. It's a short taxi, so they will also start their before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff to the line, please. Roger. Brake tent. Fuel cross flow. Manual and off. Uh, ignition anti-ice, both off. Radar terrain, U train, I have uh, weather. Before takeoff check, two line complete. As Superjet 2245 approaches its assigned runway, ground will transfer them to the local controller, who is responsible for traffic using the airport's runways and operating inside the tower's airspace. Superjet 2245, contact Academy Tower 119.2. 119.2, Superjet 2245. Academy Tower, Superjet 2245, uh, ready for takeoff, runway uh, 28 right. Superjet 2245, Academy Tower, hold short runway 28 right, traffic, company CRJ, two mile final. Uh, Superjet 2245, holding short 28 right. Superjet will have to hold short of the runway and wait while another aircraft lands. Once the arriving aircraft has passed their intersection, Superjet 2245 can be put into takeoff position. That's the end of part one. Download part two to see what happens during takeoff and phases two and three of Superjet's flight. Which of the following must pilots do before making initial contact with clearance delivery or ground control? A, taxi to the active runway. B, complete loading of passengers and baggage. C, complete their pre-flight procedures. Or D, listen to the current ATIS. The answer is D. Pilots are required to check in with the current ATIS code whenever making initial contact with clearance delivery or ground control. When can an aircraft that is holding short of a runway be put into takeoff position? A. When the arriving aircraft has passed the intersection. B. When the arriving aircraft looks like it will clear the intersection. C. When the pilot determines it is safe to proceed. Or D. When the controller determines it is safe to proceed. The answer is A. Arrivals must be clear of the holding aircraft's intersection before it can be put into takeoff position. 